Hello everyone, it's Zara Altair with Actation Now and this is the Midweek Zap and today we are going to get a clue with Phil Boyer. Phil, welcome. I'm so excited. It's always so much fun when, when you're here. So for anybody who does not know who you are, um, please just give us a brief introduction. Well, thanks for having me on again, Zara. So I love coming on the show. It's always a blast. Uh, my name is Phil Boyer. I am the co-founder of Booze Hound. We are a hundred proof creative agency that distills ideas until they howl. So, and uh, you guys might also know me as the guy that goes out there and breaks rules. So there we go. A hundred proof. That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There you are. So our theme today is, um, getting a clue and one of the things I love about Phil is is that he has entirely new ways of looking at things that can be major themes or trending that may or may not actually benefit you as a as a business person and especially with your web presence uh, wherever you are online so um, I think we were talking in the green room about, you know, being specific and not being vague. You want, you want to talk a little bit about that, Bill, because I think that's a really good thing for people to think about. Well, you know, your, your message is the key to the whole ball game, right? Wh whatever your message is, it needs to be focused and it needs to be direct so people understand it. So you can't leave any of these unanswered questions, right? You know, we, we were kind of talking about leadership and stuff. What does that mean? Because these different things mean, you know, things mean different things to different people depending on their experience, even the industry and that sort of thing. So you, you gotta be very specific about what it is you're talking about. So there's no question at all what it is you're talking about and your message actually gets through to whoever it is you're talking to. Yeah, I think I think being specific is 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 really important it, because it targets um, a reaction in the people who see what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's going to ring a bell, and they're either going to agree or disagree, um, or ask questions. But um, the more specific you are the more honed in is the response that you get from people. Right, so, and, and it, the, the more you can attract the type of clients and customers that, that you want, right? Yes. You know, I've seen a lot of times where people are getting clients that they don't want, that it's not a good fit because they're not being clear, not only about their message, but even their personality. They try to be professional. They wear the shirt and tie and all that stuff, right? And they, they attract the wrong people. And when you're working on, like, especially for the stuff that I do, it, you need to have that good fit. If you're not comfortable with swearing or certain things, we're not going to work well together. So the, the, the more specific you are, the really, it, it, it can change your world. It really can. Yes, because because my experience in business is that if you start out with someone who really doesn't understand what you're doing, um, it gets strange. And and if they don't understand, it can get even stranger <laughs> uh, and, and uncomfortable. And you know those people can become the cursed client and cause you so many headaches, um, you know, from not paying you or uh, niggling over minor details that they make up. It's not right. even that what you're doing is, isn't what you promised. It's that they come up with these, these little reasons why they think they're not being served well. Um, so the clearer you are and the more specific you are from the beginning, the better the connection, the stronger the connection. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, and I, think, I think the major theme for today is how to not waste time. 
how to not be doing what other people are doing and who's going to notice you because you're just parroting all the stuff that other people are doing, including the actions that they take that are parroting mm -hmm. other people. So, uh, <laughs> exactly. and, you know, one of the things I admire about you, Phil, is that, you know, in the last year, you have made some major changes in what you do. You used to have a hangout on air. You don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your personal experience and why, how you came to the conclusion to make those changes? Well, you know, I, I, I follow what's going on in, in the market and in the world. And I don't mean from like a news perspective, although that does help me understand what the landscape is. So essentially, what I do is I understand what is actually going on. So right now, we there, there was a trend away from live, right? Just kind of as Google Hangouts started to become mainstream where everybody and their brother was doing one, you, you saw this trend away from live. You saw things like Netflix and Hulu and all these places where on demand was more uh, in line with what people wanted, you saw that becoming more and more prominent and the live going down. I saw my live views drop and I saw my on-demand views go up. So what I did was um, that coupled with what the landscape was, I said, okay, it's it's time to make a change. So I went to a, a pre-recorded short five minute or so um, series that was still video. And then I started looking at video in general and what was happening with video and i saw that i could actually have a bigger reach and get my message out to the people that needed to see it if i did a podcast so i i do this kind of hybrid thing right now which i'm not going to be doing going forward but up until last week where i did the audio i put that out in various places but i also used youtube i created a youtube slide type of video that i used to distribute um on, on other channels like Twitter and Tumblr and uh, here on the event page on Google Plus. Um, but now with YouTube changing their terms of service and looking what's going on with that, I've made even more changes now. So there won't be a video component to the podcast anymore, except to say that um, I was doing a daily house show, I called it, and I'll still be doing that, but that'll be a one day a week thing that ties into the podcast. So it, it's just a matter of, you know, looking at what's right for you as the business and your audience and understanding what the landscape is and what people are and not be afraid to adjust and tweak and make it happen. So it's not only easy for you, but better for your customers and better for your message because it can get out there to more people. Better for your customers. And I was watching you and Kenneth Manassi earlier today, and um, the phrase Kenneth used is, you are not your customer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that we need to think like that. How, which is what directs how we dovetail what we're doing with our business. Because if the customers are not being, are your customers are not going live, what is the point of being live? Right. Yeah. And, and you know, another reason for the podcast was I kept hearing, well, you know, I just have that playing. Nobody was really watching it. People were listening to it, but they weren't watching it. So it's like, why should I put all this effort into video if people aren't going to really watch it? <laughs> so, um but then you had this thing where, okay, I did the audio and I just kind of did this video, which just had like a slide up there that had the name of the show. And then people are saying, well, there's no video. What, what's going on here? I want to see. It's like, okay, make up your mind, people. <laughs> but, you know, you you, you have to listen and, and understand what's going on in the landscape and, and adjust. And right, you know, like I prefer video, but I'm not my own customer. So I need to look at what's going on. And, and what people want and, and create content that's for them and about them, but also plays to my strengths. So that, that's kind of what, what I've done and what I do with my customers. Can you say that I think what you just said is so important 
about the customers and playing to your strength. Would you just say that one more time? Because I think that's a really key. <laughs> um, okay. What did, I, what did I say? So something to the effect of, um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'd rather watch video. I'm not much of a podcaster guy, but you know, my customers want podcasts. That's kind of what they want. So that's what I have to deliver. And I need to, you know, do what they want, what the customer wants. Plus, what plays into my strengths? So it has to be that that too. Because if you're trying to do video and you suck, that's not going to work. So you got to figure out a, a way that you can match those two together. I I just think that's really really key, because I think you know the whole the whole thing. You know how how are you going to stand out from the crowd if everybody is doing this and you're not good at that? What is the point? You know, mm -hmm. you're not being good at email, or you're not being good at video, or you're not being good at content creation, or you're not being good at design, web design, or whatever it is, you know, when, when you know your strengths, you can play those strengths to the specific audience that resonates with you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, uh, I, I just think that you tied it together so perfectly. I, I feel really strongly about, you know, using your strengths. Yes, there's, a, there's you know, as entrepreneurs, there's always things that we don't particularly like doing, you know, but mm -hmm. we do them because it's part of the whole total picture of making the business, the business work. Or we, you know, outsource them to people who are really skilled at those things and we're not or we just don't like doing it for one reason or another. But that if you are using your strengths, whatever those might be, that is where you, your personal power comes from. Trying to be that other thing is not going to be you. And sure enough, you know, even if those people are targeted and to get what you have to offer, if you're not coming from a position of strength, it shows. It does. It does. Well, and, and you know, if we're being honest, our role in our business is our strength. Whatever our strength is, that's what we need to be offering our business so it succeeds. And everything else, you know, you, you, you hire out. You either get employees or you hire contractors, you get a VA whatever you, you get rid of that stuff um just so you can concentrate on what you do best and what you can offer the company so the companies can succeed right we can't do it alone we have to have a team if you try to you know wear every single hat in your company you're gonna fail because you're not gonna you can't scale that you can't there's only so much you can do there's only so many hours in the day and so you might as well spend those hours doing what you're good at let people do the stuff that you're not good at but they are and, and go make it happen. And that that's really, that's how, if you look at successful businesses, that's what they've done. Richard Branson, he doesn't do it all, right? And his music company, he didn't know jack about the music business, but he hired a guy that knew exactly what kids were listening to, what music was what, how they should target it, and that's what made their music, that's what made Virgin Music work, is because this, because Richard Branson was smart enough to know, I need this guy over here. And that, that's the key. And Richard Branson handled the business end. He handled the sales and all that stuff. He handled all the stuff that his strengths light in. But as far as the music end, he, he got a guy that knew all that stuff. And, and that's why Virgin Music became Virgin Music. Yeah, and then we have a couple of comments here. Um, Glenn Jewett says, know when the format is essential to the message. And I think that's a great point, but I just want to go on and reiterate that the format may, may be essential to the message, but still, if it's not one of your strengths, you need to be very cautious about using that format. Yeah, I, I think you can tweak the message to fit the format. I've done that. I went from live video to recorded video to podcast. So I, I think, you know, in and truth be told, inside little secret here, it all starts from a what is essentially is a blog post. So I essentially write a script first, 
translate that into at the time it was video, you know, and then on down. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't, I think format's important in the sense that it needs to be directed where your audience is. I think that's where format is really key. But you can translate any message to the format. Right. And then, and then um, Sheila Hensley giving us some feedback here. She says, oh boy, your cautions there all terror makes you repeat the important stuff. <laughs> 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 An excellent point, Zara Altair. Know your strengths and don't try to be everything to everyone. Yeah, I. Thanks, Sheila. Thanks for being here. Yeah, Sheila's awesome. Yeah, she is. And, um, and then Wirek is here. Says Namaste. Everyone came in late with dinner plate in hand. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Vivek. What's going on, man? <laughs> and also Kristen Drysdale, GIP, sorry so late, hello everyone. So all the Zapsters, I want to thank you all for being here and please fire away with questions because if there's a master of answering questions and targeting in, it is Phil. So Phil, while we're, while we're here, um, we were talking in the green room about SEO and you and I had a conversation yesterday about SEO as a strategy or a tactic. So mm -hmm. why don't you talk a little bit about, about that? Because I think you make some important points. Um, I cannot stand the word tactic and I don't use the word tactic because it's a, it's a misused word. I see it being interchanged with strategy. Right. It's, yeah. you know, your SEO strategy. No, SEO is a tactic and SEO doesn't work anymore. I'm sorry. I know that's going to piss a lot of SEOers off and a lot of people that do SEO. But much like I was saying earlier, I'm watching the landscape and I'm seeing what's going on. And people do not spend time on websites anymore. They spend time on their phones, in apps, in Snapchat, in Facebook apps and Messenger and all these things. This is where people hang out. And if you want to reach those people, that's where you need to concentrate. That's where you need to focus. And if you don't believe me, that's cool. But you guys that are all focusing on SEO for Google, even Google says that SEO is becoming less useful because that's their defense in this EU antitrust thing, right? They're saying apps like um, Yelp, right? The, people are going to Yelp instead of Google to get restaurant reviews and stuff. They're going to Twitter and saying, hey, I'm in New York City, where's a good restaurant? They're not going to search. So as, as we go move forward, search becomes less and less useful. And if we're not ahead of the curve, if we're not where people are, we're not gonna be, we're, our message isn't gonna get to the people that need that it needs to get to, right? So I, don't, I haven't done search in like two years. I don't, I don't care about SEO. I don't do it um, because I, I personally think it's a waste of time. I, I, I see actually zero benefit from it because we don't live in that world anymore. We live in a world where we have connections, right? Where I can talk to you, Zara, but I can also at the same time talk to everybody watching and afterwards we can hang out. I mean, even before the show, we had a discussion going on, right? And, and that's, that's really where the power is right and i don't want to get into relationship marketing because i think that's gotten blown out of proportion as well but you know it, it's about it's not about making these superficial connections anymore it's about earning this trust and talking with people and finding out what their needs are again search cannot understand what your audience is it's an algorithm it's a computer and they get it wrong a lot so you can't understand what your customer needs unless you talk to them and you 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 are in the trenches, so to speak, and, and you can get in there. So I, I don't bother with SEO. I take that time and I apply it in creating content that people will talk about, right? You know, it's, it's about conversations and not conversations with you, but conversations about you, right? So that's what I want. I want people talking about, hey, did you see Phil's show or did you see Phil do this or whatever? Right. That that's what I want, because we don't have to reach everybody. We need to reach the core people that will help us reach everybody. Right. And, and um, 
you know, everybody has a different, different definition of SEO, but um, if you think, I like to think of it as optimizing. So I, th I think what you're saying is, is really spot on about optimizing where you are and what your reach is. But also I, in um, David Amerlin's new book, SEO Help, um, he talks a lot about that, that it is, you know, if, if you're using keywords, yeah, that's cool. But what you need is that consistent message, a consistent presence, and that people are talking about you. And the more that people mention you or talk about or share your information, that is part of the optimization of your business. I just, I just wanted to be clear about that because if you're talking about the old SEO tactics, yeah, you're right. They don't work. It's not about people at all. It's about algorithms. And then, Phil, you're going to love this. Jessica Maynard. Why is this not coming up? Okay, con comment tracker is not working. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to read Jessica's comment. I love when Phil Boyer pisses people off. That means you're going to get ideas that work. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Jessica. That's just about it, isn't it? <laughs> and then let's see if I can get bring this one up. No, nope. comment tracker is not working. So Sheila Hensley says it's hard to communicate unless you are where the eyes and ears are. Boy, is that true, Sheila? And mm -hmm. then William Rock says. SEO is now SSO, semantic search optimization. However, the basic SEO foundation of building the basics is a start along the way to track with analytics. So we've got our analytic guy giving us some feedback here. You know, I, I think looking at search is the wrong, I, I think you, you keyed on it, Zara, by saying it's, it, you're optimizing your presence and stop looking at it from a search perspective. Because again, there, there's a shift in how people are consuming content and where they're consuming that content, right? You know, I did a post the other day about, you know, you finally get me to your blog post and then you have this pop-up that prevents me from reading that blog post with an email thing, right? It drives me, I don't, you know, this whole idea of driving traffic to websites and email, you know, lists needs to go away. People aren't there anymore. That's, that's 2003, 2004. We're, we're in 2015. People, again, like I said, we're, we're in apps. So this is where you need to concentrate on. You, your website is useless, right? Well, I shouldn't say it's useless. It's useless for blog posts. Blog posts today, it doesn't matter. Put that on medium, put that where eyeballs are, put it where people congregate, put it on, I hesitate to say this, but you know, even Facebook, because they have long form posts, put it on Google Plus, long form, LinkedIn Pulse, right? Go to places where people are and where they're gonna see your stuff. People don't wanna go to your blog post, they wanna be where they are, right? It doesn't make sense for me to say, hey, go go read my blog post right now while you're watching this video because nobody's gonna wanna do that. <laughs> they wanna sit here and watch this video and listen to me rant about SEO. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's a matter about thinking about, again, getting people to your website and getting people to sign up for your email address, that's for you. It's not for your customer, it's for you. You want that, you want the subscriber numbers, you want the blog post hits, you want all that stuff, but that's not what your customer wants. Your customer wants to be informed, connect with you, and give you money. That's what they want. So that's what you need to deliver. Blog post, emails, that just puts barriers in between all that. That just says, you know what? I don't want you to give me money right now. I want you to sign up for my email newsletter. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Oh, wait, I don't have to give you any money, Phil? No, you can give me money, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I don't have an email list. I, I haven't done that in, in forever either. Um, you know, I, I, I believe in, in have creating quality content that stands out and having a strong call to action at the end of that that gets people to take action. Too many things don't get people to take action. It's this frilly, inspirational meme nonsense that – you know, it makes you feel good, but it doesn't actually make your business successful. You need to get down into the trenches and make it happen. That, that's really what you got to do. 
that's that's so right and that and then we wick has a comment i'm really sorry folks i just i see them but i can't bring them up um we wick says seo is an, as an acronym has a new full form strategic engagement optimization i like that we wick thank you and then Glenn Jewett has a question once again. Sorry, I can't bring it up. You mentioned outsourcing. Do you see a difference between referral versus white label supply? I'm not quite sure I understand the question. I, I would say, you know, referrals are great. Um, it all depends on what your goals are as a business. I mean, if you want to earn revenue and, you know, if, if if it's, I mean, I guess if it's a core part of your business, obviously you don't want to refer that out, right? You want to get a VA or someone to, or an employee or whatever it is to help you do that part of your business. Um, so I, I guess that to, to answer that, it would depend on your, the goals of your business, what it is, what part of your business this, this thing relies in or lies in. Um, but yeah, if you could be a little more, clearer on, on that question. I can do a better job at answering it. Okay, cool. And and then um, let's go back a little bit to the email, the email and why you don't do it. Uh, because there's, I still see, I saw a post this morning about, you know, your email list and, you know, it is the way to communicate and you own it. Google can go, Facebook can go, you know, save your email list. Let, okay, let, let's, let's talk about that because we've been told for years you have to own, you have to own your list, you have to own your, your website, you have to own your customers. That's great. And I buy into that idea. The reality is we don't live there anymore, right? We can, we can try to force this all we want. And again, that's for us. We want to own that. The reality is people don't want that anymore. People have way too much email. Your email's not getting read. It's getting deleted. Um, you know, if you look at open rates there and, and all that stuff, in fact, I did a show on it a while back. They're, they're not what people like to think they are. And there's a lot of, um, What's the word? The, 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 there's a lot of colorful language going on when it comes to how these numbers are presented and talked about, right? And, and here's the other piece of the pie. Guys that can sell and teach you how to do email, that's a business for them. So of course, those are the people that are telling you, you need to have email. So you can't listen to those guys, right? You gotta listen to, you gotta listen to your customers and what they want. Don't listen to experts, don't even listen to me, right? The only thing you should listen to is go listen to your customers. I can, I can, you know, I'm not saying I have all the answers, but what I do is I, I look at the landscape and I look at customers and, and I, I try to serve them based on the whole entire picture. And that's what I would suggest you do for your business, because you know what, maybe email does work for you. Maybe you're in, in a certain industry where email is key and email is going to work for you. And, that then you should stick with that. You should stick with what works. Um, bottom line, but generally speaking, I don't do email because it's a barrier between the customer connecting with me and giving me money because it's just it's just free stuff that I'm, people put out too much free stuff. Every time you turn around, we have all this abundance of content that nobody can even read. Nobody has the time to read it right? So why put that out? Put out small quantities of high quality content with strong call to actions and you're going to get results. Oh, I love that. I love that, Phil. And just following up on the, on the email, I would say that with my business email, 75%, this is rough approximation, of the emails I get, are from businesses and many of them are well-respected businesses but it's always here's the free stuff here's the free stuff here's today's free stuff did you read our free stuff you know and i'm and you're right it's like no delete 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 
Uh, and um, I also think this was Kenneth quite a while back, which was like, stop doing that and go, you know, deal with deal with your customers. Mm -hmm. um, right. And then I'm really sorry, people, I cannot bring the comments up, but um, Stan Bush in the comment stream has an article that he wrote about strategic engagement optimization. So you may want to check that out. And then, um, oh, I have totally lost. Here it is. And then Kristen Drysdale has a question, Phil. She says, okay, so what happens when these entities owned by other people go away or penalize you like Facebook does by not letting your posts be seen by everyone? That's part of doing business, right? Nothing's guaranteed. Life isn't fair. You have to adjust and you have to tweak and you have to go with with the flow and understand and, and be ahead of the game and understand where the next thing is. I haven't been on Facebook in, what is it now, three, four years, and I don't miss it. I haven't lost business from it um, because obviously, you know, Facebook's pay to play these days. You don't want to be there. It's pointless unless you're a big brand and you can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars over there. It's useless. And you know, the, the most anybody's getting off of Facebook is a like or two. And I think actually, again, to give you a point of what I mentioned earlier, Jessica Maynard, who's in the audience, she's killing it on Facebook. So everything I just said, she can come back in here and say, no, that's total BS because Wait, I'm over yes. here being successful. She has. She yeah. says, um, hold on. I've got to get this. Here we go. We have had the Facebook convo, and I get it, but that is where my Narish Divas are, and I provide value there. The reason I started using my email list is because I had enough tell me they don't use Facebook or IG, but they want in on my sales. So I started to send them emails. You're right. It's about what they want. And my emails are very sales related. It's actually a reply to buy with two mm -hmm. picks of things from my store and they can reply to buy it. So See, thank you, I, Jessica. I, I love that. And you know, Jess is smart because she, she gets it. She understands that it doesn't matter what I say or what anybody else, she's, she's making Facebook work. She's been able to connect with her audience in a way that they actually, that her stuff is seen and that she can make a go of it. Same with emails. She's, she's, she's got it working and she's not doing just free stuff, right? She's like, go buy, go buy this stuff. She gets business. She understands it. And uh, th that, that's what I love about her. And I love chatting with her because a lot of times she proves <laughs> what I say wrong, you know, but at the same time she proves me right because it's about connecting with your audience and it doesn't matter the platform. It doesn't matter this or that. It, what matters is that connection and how you can engage with your, with your audience and the people that are going to buy. Right. And that's the key too: people that are going to buy, not just anybody and everybody, but people that are going to buy or evangelize what you do. Hopefully they do both, but you know, that's, that's so true. And just for um, all the Zapsters, Jessica was on the midweek zap as a newcomer to Google plus. Uh, about 10 months ago and on the anniversary of that show I can't remember the date off the top of my head Jessica is going to come back and share her story of what she has done in the last year because it is it's just phenomenal she really gets it so watch mm -hmm. for that it's coming up mm -hmm. awesome okay and I think Let me, let me just, Jessica has, I'm really sorry I can't bring any of this stuff up. It's just switching my camera. Weird. Hello, Google. Uh, Jessica says, I have a set schedule and my girls know when to expect a contest or sale. And I have taught them to set it up to get notifications so they don't miss out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Jessica really has the concept of, of directly connecting with her market. Yeah, yeah, she she she's phenomenal at that. She really is. 
She is. So does anybody else have any more questions? We're kind of coming to the end of our time here. And um, Did I actually answer Kristen's question? Well, yeah, you said it was part of business. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, I agree. You know, it's like Facebook. It's not so much penalizing Kristen, and from my point of view, is that that Facebook arbitrarily decides who sees your posts, and it arbitrarily decides whose posts you see. It's not. It's not but a direct We live in this world of algorithms, right? And again, algorithms that get it wrong more times than they get it right. And so we have to go into this understanding that these algorithms are in place that are working against us, not for us, like we'd like to believe. So, you know, when you're on Twitter, when you're on Google+, Plus, Google+, Plus sucks. I don't understand why they feed me what they feed me. I mean, Google, I don't know. I know people love Google's algorithms. I, I think they're one of the worst out there. I think, I don't know, I won't get into that. But, you know, you have to understand when you get into these platforms, you know, that they could go away, but they're also essential for your business, right? And that's why, like right now, I'm on Snapchat, you know, um, because that's where a lot of people are right now. And it, it's, yes, the kids are the big demo over there, but there's also an older demographic up there. If you look at the content they're producing, they look at how they're growing and innovating the platform, this is where we are headed towards these types of things. So I'm ramping up my presence over there on Snapchat because I know Google Plus is going to go away. I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and piss some more people off. I would be surprised if Google Plus is here in its current format in a year. I bet you it won't be because yeah. Google, I mean, Google Plus doesn't work. They, they've abandoned it. They don't take care of it. It's just out there. So unless they, they, realize, hey, let's put some effort into this thing, let's innovate it, let's take care of it, it's going to go away because it's not going to pay off for them and people are going to stop using it. So um, that's what we need to look at. No matter how much we love this platform, we have to be realistic about the platforms that we use, not get nostalgic and understand that these are tools. And as long as the tool works, use it. The minute it doesn't, you need to move on and go to something else. But And, and that's why engagement is important. That's my long answer around engagement's important because I can go to Snapchat and I can say, hey, come on over here. I'm over on Snapchat. Let's go hang out. Let's go over here and do this or Instagram or, you know, whatever the new flavor is going to be tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Phil, we're really at the end of our show. So tell people where they can get more of you. And um well, follow me on Snapchat. I'm Phil Boyer 24 over there. Let's go have some fun. I know the UI sucks on Snapchat, but you'll get used to it. Ask me questions. Let's have some fun over there. Let's tell some stories. Uh, Rule Breaking Ideas is a show I do every Friday. It's going to be in podcast form. So it's at uh, comes about comes out about 10 o'clock mountain every Friday. Um, so you can rulebreakingideas.com if I didn't say that. You can, that's where you can get all those episodes. Um, and I'm pretty much Phil Boyer everywhere on Twitter. Uh, I am Phil Boyer on Instagram. So that's how you can learn more and connect with me and let's chat, hang out, and have some fun. Drink beers, have vodka shots. I, I you recommend want. if you haven't hung out with Phil that that you do. It's, it's You're going to have a, a good time. It's 100% proof. Good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you, Zapsters, for being here today. Um, this was a really great conversation, Phil. I love it when you come and, you know, shake things up and stir the pot. It's, <laughs> it's just a lot of fun, and we get a lot of responses. So thank you once again for being here, and we'll see you next week, everyone. Bye. See you. See ya.